On Tuesday, SpaceX test-fired its Super Heavy rocket for about 12 seconds, making it the longest duration firing of the massive booster so far. Besides testing the Super Heavy and Raptor 2 capabilities, the static fire also tested the durability of the SpaceX Stage 0. After the previous test, SpaceX upgraded the Starbase launch tower and launch pad. Sadly, the result did not reflect the changes, as there are still concrete problems. Let's go ahead and analyze these problems in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX continues to prep its Starship Mars rocket for its first ever orbital test flight, which could be coming soon. During a static fire test yesterday, on November 29th at its South Texas facility, SpaceX ignited multiple Raptor engines on Booster 7. The static fire occurred at 2.42 p.m. Eastern and lasted for 13 seconds. The test was a powerful one, suggesting it involved a healthy proportion of Booster 7's 33 Raptors. That turned out to be the case as shortly after the test, SpaceX confirmed via Twitter that Booster 7 lit up 11 of its engines. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also said via Twitter that the test is a little more progress to Mars. Earlier this month, SpaceX fired 14 Raptor engines on this booster for a few seconds, so Tuesday's test did not set a new record regarding the number of engines tested. However, this long duration firing is the longest period of time that so many Raptor engines have been fired at once. This is the main goal of this test. Besides the excellent operation of 11 Raptor 2s, the important thing is that we still see debris raining down. Go ahead and as you watch, pay really close attention for the few seconds that matter here. Hey, you see that? See that? Seriously, SpaceX really struggles with concrete, it seems. Indeed, the last test of 14 engines witnessed the concrete beneath the orbital launch mount blasting off and raining down due to the intense heat and pressure from the engine exhaust. After that, SpaceX reinforced the concrete to prevent damage during future tests and launches. The company uses highly resistant and long-lasting Fondag concrete to protect the floor beneath the pad from the engine exhaust. Fondag, F-O-N-D-A-G, is pre-blended, high-strength, heat-resistant concrete designed for heavy industrial applications. Fondag is a pure calcium aluminate concrete that contains both calcium aluminate cement and calcium aluminate aggregates. The aggregates within Fondag are actually composed of the same clinker from which Lafarge grinds the calcium aluminate cement. When Fondag hydrates, there is not only a physical bond between cement and aggregate, there is also a chemical bond. The aggregates within Fondag are very hard, dense, and non-porous. This combination of physical and chemical bonds between cement and aggregate produces a superior concrete capable of withstanding the toughest combinations of thermal cycling, high heat, severe abrasion, mechanical shock, and corrosion. Fondag is extremely stable at high temperatures and in conditions of severe thermal cycling from negative 184 degrees centigrade to 1093 degrees centigrade. In the same conditions, Portland cement-based concrete becomes unstable and experiences mechanical and structural failure. With this upgrade, the latest test doesn't feel like the torrential downpour of tiny rocks we saw before. I'd say this concrete held up a bit better, if not much better. But it's certainly not perfect, as we can see. Remember, this time uses a smaller number of engines, and the ultimate goal of SpaceX is three times this. So, after analyzing the obtained data, SpaceX definitely needs more systems to support the launch pad for a safe Starship flight in the future. But given the current situation, Musk's goal won't come to fruition anytime soon. Indeed, the path to orbit for SpaceX and its Starship launch system is still unclear. Previously, SpaceX founder Elon Musk said the next step was to fire a subset of Super Heavy's engines for about 20 seconds to test autogenous pressurization. This method of pressurizing fuel tanks uses gases generated on board the rocket rather than a separately loaded and inert gas such as helium. Tuesday's test may have been a slightly shorter version of this autogenous pressurization test, which only took 12 seconds instead of 20, or it may have been something else. The company is taking an iterative design and development approach to the Starship vehicle and its super heavy first stage, so its test plans are fluid not unlike the rocket's cryogenic propellants. In all likelihood, SpaceX still has a couple of key tests to complete before the combined Super Heavy rocket and Starship upper stage are launched from 
the company's Starbase facility in South Texas. It's anticipated that SpaceX will conduct at least a short duration test firing of all 33 Raptor engines simultaneously to gain confidence in the totality of the complex plumbing to fuel and pressurize the rocket's propulsion system. Then, the Starship's upper stage will be stacked on top of Super Heavy, and the combined vehicles must complete a wet dress rehearsal. What does seem clear is that SpaceX is maturing its approach to working with the Starship architecture. After completing all of its technical preparations, SpaceX must also obtain a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is in progress but has yet to be completed. While it remains theoretically possible that Starship will make its orbital launch attempt in December, there is an increasing likelihood that the test flight will slip into the early part of 2023. In the end, whatever happens, will happen, so let's wait a little while longer. Meanwhile, in China, after years of trying in space, the country has six astronauts aboard its recently completed space station for the first time following the arrival of three crew members aboard Shenzhou 15. The Shenzhou 15 crew will be sustained by supplies delivered to Tiangong aboard the Tianzhou 5 cargo mission launched on November 11th, Eastern. The Tiangong space station now consists of three roughly 22-ton modules in a 393 by 386 kilometer orbit. The 13.5-ton Tianzhou 5 cargo spacecraft and two roughly 8.2-ton Shenzhou spacecraft are docked with it. The Shenzhou 14 crew is expected to return to Earth in early December. The first crew rotation marks the start of science operations on Tiangong, which carries 24 experiment cabinets and a payload airlock. China aims to keep the orbital outpost constantly occupied and operational in orbit for at least 10 years. China will begin to send international experiments to the station through an initiative with UNOOSA in the near future. It's expected that Tiangong will outlast the aging International Space Station and could become the only permanent crewed outpost in orbit. The arrival of Shenzhou 15 at Tiangong signifies the completion of plans approved back in 1992 to develop human spaceflight capabilities and build a space station. The Tiangong itself could also be expanded from three to six modules, according to Chinese space officials. Such an expansion may depend upon other countries joining the effort. The Suntian Optical Module, a co-orbiting Hubble-class space survey telescope with a 2-meter aperture and 2.5-gigapixel camera, is planned to join Tiangong in orbit in late 2023 or early 2024. The decision to embark on a space station program was taken back when the country's economy represented around 2% of the global economy and seeking a foothold in the international launch market. China has since become the world's second largest economy behind the United States and achieved a number of features in space, including a Mars rover landing, a lunar far-side landing, building its Beidou GNSS constellation, and more. The country is also moving forward with a robotic lunar exploration program with the goal of building a lunar base in the vicinity of the South Pole of the Moon in the 2030s. This pathway is designed to converge with human spaceflight experience gained from Tiangong and the development of new, large rockets to allow China to send astronauts to the International Lunar Research Station. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos such as this, and so for that, we thank you again, and we hope to see you again next time.